Okay. Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be playing Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, it says that it's not for kids, but I gotta check it out. It's basically a horror game, and I don't know why it's a horror game. And if you guys don't know, I have the Toy Bonnie plush! Because he's my favorite animatronic on Five Nights at Freddy's 2. We're going to be playing a Five Nights at Freddy's 2 video on Christmas to celebrate with y'all. Um, so, yeah, let's get started to play Doki Doki Literature Club. And I hope there isn't any inappropriate stuff. Like, they they might be talking dark. I don't know, but I hope there isn't any inappropriate stuff. I need to lower down my volume because um, I've been watching Bijou Mike. <laughs> Alright. This is embarrassing. But I have to play it for my fans. Um, it's not suitable for children. <laughs> okay. I can tell off the bat it's going to be a visual novel. And I don't read any manga, so... I'm sorry, y'all, if I offended you. Right. Please enter your name. Um, let's just put... Let's just put Roxy in because Roxy's here with me, the toy owl. Roxy. <laughs> hey, I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally obvious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you would never see yourself making today. But it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. So yeah, 12 year old playing Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm the first kid. We used to walk to school together on days like this. But starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently. I would get tired of waiting up. Okay, never mind. I can already tell. It's going to be a game, like a love game. So if there's any love, I'm going to end this episode really quick because and stop playing this game. Because this game may feature inappropriate stuff since it says it's not suitable for children. But I'm a warrior. I'm a trooper. Let's do this. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. My friends watch my content, so... um. If y'all think this is cringe, please just go because this is already cringe. And an ambulance is playing because somebody's about to die in this video. And, um, sorry for y'all. Um, anyways. But if she is going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sign an idol in front of the sidewalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Okay. I overslept again, but I caught you this time. Hi, Nye. Hi. We're in video. In game. Maybe... <laughs> Roxy's speaking. All right. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Eh, you say that you, you like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's me and Roxy. <laughs> yeah, that's me, Roxy. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we are a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. E he he he. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. You see, Toy Bonnie is traumatized because this game is disturbing now. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Roxy, <laughs> have you decided on a club to join yet? No, I haven't. A club? I told you already, I'm not interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. This, she's a good friend. She's really nice and energetic. I like nice and energetic people. We work well together. Even with introverts, I can turn them to an extrovert really quickly. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did. In one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. 
Sire likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly con content. Okay, I forgot. Content, my English, sorry. Just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me. Yes, everyone's happiness is. And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. Roxy, you have a friend. You have a good friend. You should like you should let go of all the other sassy friends you've been doing. Okay, Roxy the owl. This is Roxy, this is Toy Bonnie. This is cringe already. Will you at least promise me you'd try a little? Yeah, I guess I'd promise you that. Okay, here's the issue with me. Even if I grow up to be 100 years old, I'm still gonna have toys because I love toys. Yay. Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. Alright, now we're in school. The school day is just as ordinary as ever. D is he wearing a mask? I do not like people not wearing masks at school. That's bad. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. <laughs> I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Sayori. Sorry, it must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I think I should put a voice for these characters. But Sayori is just going to be me because I relate to Sayori very much. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom... But I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. I am worse, Sayori. You haven't even seen my YouTube channel. You don't need to wait up if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, well, you know. Know what? Well, that you should come to my club. Sayori. Yeah? There is no way I'm going to your club. Eh, meanie. Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she, only, she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed at the club, she inherited the title, vice president. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. I, I sound like a little nerd playing an anime game. That just sounds really weird. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki, who's Natsuki? Made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can tell if Sayori, I can't tell if Sayori is, sorry, my English is really bad, is really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. I let out a long sigh. Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go. Ooh, you want them cupcakes? And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. <laughs> It, it's a wonderful journey to sell your soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third-year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here. I told you, don't call me a new member. Oh, he got interrupted. A, I glance around the room. Oh, who this? Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori says nice things about you. Seriously, you burn a boy. <laughs> Way to kill the atmosphere. 
Roxy, what a nice surprise. You see, Roxy, you joined a club for once. You're getting smarter every day. Welcome to the club. Dot, dot, dot. All words escape with me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly... Well, I won't say cute, but I'm just going to say is full of girls. <laughs> I'm sorry for ruining your day, everyone. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. Sorry. I'm not going to do this like a little nerdy style. Like, so sorry. Not Suki. Hmm? Oh, that's not Suki. Okay. The girl with the sour attitude whose name is apparently not Suki is one that I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She is also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. I actually kind of like this music. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear. Oh, okay, we whisper. Then turns back towards the other girl. Anyways, this is Nasuki, always full of energy. Nah, no, Sayori, you full of energy, literally. I can't even barely breathe when you're here. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Not really. I mean, sorry, Yuri. Don't say things like that. Aw, oh, Yuri's shy. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Nasuki. Alright, Toy Bonnie. Which girl you like most? Never mind. Uh, ah, well, it's so nice to meet both of you. You see, Roxy? You get to hang out with your, all your sassy friends who love Starbucks. <laughs> and it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? Alright, Monica, it sounds like a... It sounds like a name... Oh, wait, it has a K in it. Dang. That's right. It's great to see you again, Roxy. Monica is a classic American name. I'm sorry, guys. But Monica is a classic American name, to be honest. Um... Monica smiles sweetly. Okay, she 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 she's now a hunchback. You see, look at she like this. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. How do you know Monica? Roxy, how do you know this girl? Is she one of your friends at Starbucks? I told you not to mess with them. They gossip about you every day. <laughs> Basically, completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... You too, Monica. Come sit down, Roxy. We made room for you at the table. So you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the, the cupcakes. Alright, Monica. Hey, Roxy, you're gonna eat cupcakes, okay? I thought you liked Burger King. Roxy, that's your favorite fast food. This is Roxy right here. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Okay. Sayori loves to eat, I can tell. Me too. Don't worry. I have tortilla chips at the back of my computer. Then how <laughs> how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it has been what what I hate my English. Why didn't so that <laughs> There is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Is this recording? I need to check. All right, it's the recording. Yay! My my hairdo is really bad. Nasuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Nasuki grabs a wrap tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Wait, what about the piano? The piano is cutting off the music. Dang. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Sayori- No, not Sayori. Nasuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da. Look at all of them. Whoa, and then Monica is just like, mm. Yay, diabetes. Nasuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. I have a cat behind me. She's a cinnamon roll. The whiskers are drawn with icings, and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. Oh, good. So cute. Oh my gosh, everyone is happy. I had no idea you were so good at baking, Nasuki. Of course, 
The girl with the pink hair is good at baking. <laughs> ee hee hee hee, well, you know. <laughs> Just hurry and take one. Sayuri grabs one first, then Monica, I follow. It's delicious. Sayuri talks with her mouthful, I knew it, and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. <laughs> Natsuki is quite- why, why did this get really detailed all of a sudden? Natsuki is- Roxy, Roxy, I know you want to take a bite of that cupcake, but the thing is, it's fake, okay? It's, it's just the game. Stop moving. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances at my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? <laughs> for sure. I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. It's really good. Yeah, Roxy, it's really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why, why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't heard this, haven't I heard this somewhere before? Yes, in the manga, you, you know these people called tsunderes. Okay, I'm actually acting like a nerd. I mean, I know nothing, like, I know something, some things about anime. I'm sus, okay. Made them for you or anything? Eh, I thought you technically did, Sayori said. Well, maybe. But not for, you know, you, dummy. I can tell there's something wrong with Natsuki. All right, all right. I I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Is this the part that's not suitable for children? Okay. Yuri returns to the table cre carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom. Okay, I'm going to make Yuri's voice more classy. Don't worry. The teachers gave us permission. <laughs> it sounds French. I'm sorry, y'all. After- oh, okay, I accidentally skipped some dialogue. Ah, uh, I guess. Okay, Monica is gonna be, um, a gringo. <laughs> Obviously. Um, hey, hey, don't get yourself intimidated. Yuri is trying to impress you. I'm gonna make the accents later, but I don't feel like it. I don't have the voice, too. And that's not- Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, I but I at least enjoy tea. What kind of tea? I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. She's like, yeah, yeah, I got Roxy. Come on, guys, Rock. I mean, guys. Come on, girls. Roxy is a girl, okay? You guys can't fall in love with Roxy. Or unless they're... Or... Oh, no. They're falling in love with Roxy. So, what made you consider joining the literature club? I mean... Oh, my gosh. So, what made you consider the literature club? Um... I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. Well, make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the literature club, it is my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You... Keep, oh my gosh. You could possibly be a board mem member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club yet last year? Oh my gosh. The debate club? Monica, is this true? Ahaha, well, you know, she she should go back on the debate club. She should tackle Joe Biden and Donald Trump's election. But Joe Biden won. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major club. That's correct. That's correct. I do not like politics. I am sorry, y'all. But I just do not. I can't stand politics. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. That's true. That is definitely true. I'd, ra I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. Monica, bravo. I agree. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yeah, yes, Ayori. You guys are holding hands beneath the text box. <laughs> Yuri also nods in agreement. 
then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. Um, a lot of people think books are boring, but I think books are nice. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Did she literally just read my mind? Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention like literature. You have to work hard to convince people you're both fun and worthwhile. That's true. That's what I do on my YouTube channel. <laughs> but it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah. We'll do our best. You know it. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Uh, agree? No, agrees. Oh my goodness. Such different girls all interested in the same goal. They hate politics and they love literature. What could go wrong? Monica must have really worked hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they're all delighted by of the new idea of a new member joining. Though... I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Roxy, what kind of things you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read the past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. <laughs> this dude is an absolute nerd. Roxy, you're a nerd. You, you love reading manga? Okay, you know what? I'm not going to call the people who read manga nerds, but the thing is... I respect people's opinions on manga. I, uh, I know manga is addicting, but uh, I wouldn't call them nerds. They're nice people. The people who read. I know some of my friends that love manga, and I actually read one page of manga, and I really loved it. I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. My goodness, I say nonsense in this channel. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm so nervous. Nasuki's head suddenly perks up. When I'm nervous, I say like something awful most of the time. <laughs> It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. You can see the tears almost coming up her eyes. Is she, is she okay? Anyways, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. True, I like I like that. Stephen King is also my favorite as well. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in. But it's obvious, by the way, her eyes light up. That she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But, you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements are usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can... Oh my gosh. This English. How a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop. Oh my goodness. Anyways, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Okay, I can relate. I read a horror book once. I desperately grasped something I can relate to at the minimal level. That's literally me. At this point, Yuri might as well have be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. All right, I need to check. Yes, it's still recording. Hi, guys. Uh, for someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I cannot really put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful very successful at changing the way you look at the world. It's only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Sorry for the noises in the background. A is nanai. Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about the cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left the piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud and give that back. Fine, fine. Ehehe, <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems. <laughs> Sorry for being weird, y'all. I'm, I'm weird. Why did I even play this game? 
everything you do is just cute as you are. Natsuki sits. Okay, I can tell what's about to happen. Sits up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute. Natsuki, you write your own poems. Well, and well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? Dang, sassy. I think that's impressive. Why don't you go share them sometime? No. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Eh. Not a very confident writer yet? Oh my goodness, you need to encourage her. Just say you like them. Roxy, I don't really know if you're good at talking. I understand how Natsuki feels. That's why the girls at Starbucks gossip about you. Sorry, sorry. Here, Roxy, you can, you can punch me in the face later. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities, and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Dot dot dot. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Aw, I, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We sit in silence for a moment. Okay. I have an idea, everyone. Huh? Nasuki and Yuri look quizzic quizzically at Monica. Let's go home and write a poem of our own. Yeah, let's write a poem. I love writing poems. The next time we meet, we all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, let's do it. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Roxy? Yeah, right, Roxy. Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's just still one more problem. Hey, what's that? Now that we're back into the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sorry may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made my decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um... I lose my train of thought. Roxy, how dare you! All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. Okay, a murder is about to happen. But, I'm sorry I thought... Hmm. <laughs> Roxy, you all... I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Yes, I'm so happy! Natsuki wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. <laughs> hey! You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came here for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. <laughs> I came here for the cupcakes. Roxy came here for the cupcakes, not me. Then, that makes it official! Welcome to the Literature Club. Hold on, guys. Ow! Christmas gifts hurt me! Alright, right, right. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Ah, uh, thanks, I guess. Rox Roxy, I know you want to eat the cupcakes, but the cupcakes are fake. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone, remember tonight's assignment. All right, hold on. I need to check if it's recording. Yes, yes, yes. It's recording. Ayo, ayo. Okay, I want to make sure this is on the per perfect position. Yes, perfect position. All right. Write a poem to bring the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks out over at me once more. Roxy, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. I haven't talked to Toy Bonnie. Toy Bonnie, what do you think of this game? Okay, he likes it. E he he he. Stop it with the e he 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 with that with that with that sign. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel like the anxiety welling up inside me. All right. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Nayu not Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Roxy, since you were already here, do you want to walk home together? Okay. 
That's right. Sayuri and I never walked to home together anymore because she's always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! I don't know how long this game is. <laughs> With that, two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Nasuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Is there going to be chapter two? Is this like a cliffhanger? Perhaps I have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. All right. I'll just need to make most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Okay, what? What? <gasps> Is this a mini game? We get to play a mini game. It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen to whoever's poem like whoever likes your poem the most. Roxy, Roxy, you need to write a good poem. All right. Oh, we're starting off really sad now. There's a word. Okay, so we have to pick words, and then we have to choose which character likes the word. Bro, and why is suicide in here? That's probably Yuri, because she's dark. Oh yeah, that's Yuri, alright. Um, incapable. Kitty, electricity, misery, landscape, fireworks, promise, rainbow, dazzle, rainbow. Okay, that's Sayori. Uh, okay, I'm gonna aim for Sayori, because she's the one that I relate to most. Clouds. Oh, uh, that's, that's Nasuki. Pain. Is pain Sayori? Oh, it's Sa Why is pain? Why does Sayori like pain? Cry. Defeat? Sayori. Oh my goodness. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna choose um, some nice ones. Jump. Okay, that's Natsuki. Who likes lust? Okay, I'm not gonna pick that one. Love. Yay, Sayori! Massacre! What kind of girl likes Massacre? Bubbles. Okay, Bubbles. Kawaii. I can already tell that's Nasuki. Um, I'm, I'm looking for Sayori. Ocean? No. Uh, whirlwind. No, no, no. After image? Unrestrained. Okay, that's Yuri. Dang it! Shame. Oh, Sayori jumped on shame. Alone. Sayori. Sayori. Agonizing. Wait, no. I'm gonna choose fun. Okay, Sayori likes fun. Yeah, Sayori. Marshmallow. I can tell that's Nasuki. Peace. Ah, oh, It's Nasuki. I wanna impress Sayori. Joy. Yay! Childhood. Okay, empty! Let me turn up this music real quick. This music good! Okay. Uh, jumpy. Oh no. Rain cloud. Uh... Pure. Hopeless! Okay, that's Sayori. Alright, why is Sayori so happy? But like sad inside. Hi again, Roxy. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Ha 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 ha. Nah, don't worry. Alright, I need to check. I need to check if this constantly is recording or else this recording might be corrupted. This might be a little strange for me, but at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was last to come in. So everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Roxy. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like he deserves any slack. Sayori told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you just plan to come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take it seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps their manga collection in the club. <laughs> oh, she got exposed. She got canceled. Mm -hmm. 
Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seats. Like, does she does she does this? <laughs> what? Don't worry, guys. Roxy always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. Wait, Roxy is a he? I thought this was a girl playing. Oh. Oh, I forgot. It's a male. I... I don't know what's wrong with my head, guys. If I say really offensive stuff, then I'm really sorry, y'all. He helps him with busy work without me asking, even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. To Toy Bonnie just fell on me. Toy Bonnie, please. To Toy Bonnie. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. Oh, hold on. Okay. Yeah, everyone can see Toy Bonnie in Nanai. And you almost set your house on fire. Okay, Sayomi almost said her. Is that so? He he he. You two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Roxy have good friends too. Can become good friends too. Um. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Sayori. Hmm? Dot dot dot. As usual. Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought something today, you know? Wait, Sayori! Eh? Me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what did I do? Eh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is, is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Go well, here. Yuri reaches out... Uh, into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you, you might enjoy. It's a short read, so please keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know. That is not what we're going for, Yuri. We're going to make friends. Discuss it if you- Oh, okay. Sorry. This, this is- How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked- This, this is cute. This is cute as well. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick up some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sarah and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki's rummaging around in the closet. Man, it looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down to the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I can always read some of the book Yuri gave me. But I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I closed my eyes and ended up listening on to Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably gonna seem we're, we're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs though. Hmm. Well we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We can just Need a way of showing that to everyone. Some something that speaks of, to their cr creative minds. Mm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh? What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place, even if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? 
And after they come, we can do this this thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Cyrus taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh? That's a good point. In this case, do you think food will do the trick? What kind? <laughs> Sayori's always down for food. Same thing with me. Me and Sayori, we would be actually really good friends. Ah, well, I guess we should... Cupcakes! Ah ha ha ha, good thinking. Monica's probably so annoyed. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it? Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. <laughs> oh, Cupcakes it is then. I'm hungry. <laughs> Anyways, we need to rework out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, I who has trouble finding any motivation at all. Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I ended up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Whoa! Wah! <laughs> Roxy, you get in too close. You get in too close to Sayori. I opened my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. Darn, you sassy. Why every girl sassy in here? It's your fault for sleeping like that. Oh my goodness. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know? You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over to my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah? I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. Hehe. <laughs> it's what I do best. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh? Not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Eh? Sayori glances out around at herself. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Oh my gosh. Why are you so mean, Roxy? Why? Come on. She wants. To, she's your childhood friend from Starbucks. Ah. I run my... Or oh, maybe because they gossip about you. That's why. I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get it right. I won't fall for that. There's more than that than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's toothpaste staying on your collar right there. I try to wipe up the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Roxy? Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Okay, 43 minutes. All right, we're going to do this for a whole hour. Fortunately, I don't really care about that. Hey, you meanie. Okay, let me check again. All right. And you don't even keep your blazer button up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend? Darn, that's a nasty thing to say to a girl. You can't say that. Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. Oh my goodness. Roxy! I start to button her blazer for the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Whoa, 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 whoa. We ain't starting this. We ain't starting this. Stop. Turn it, turn it out. Get it out my screen, please. We ain't starting this. 
Okay, 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 okay. That's so much better. Natsuki puts her arms on, twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a girl. <laughs> so you read the girlfriend, boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let me do things like this. And you take care of, of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyways, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we are really better at taking care of each other than we are taking care of ourselves. Okay, my friends, if you're watching this and you're like, you're my friend, or like, um, Leonardo... Just don't if it's cringe then you guys can leave. I'm sorry for you can just pick another gameplay that isn't cringe. Yeah, I guess so. Huh. So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Oh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Eh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! <laughs> Roxy, I can't wait to read yours! Yes, yeah, same. I feel to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to receive, re retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find that much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is a wrinkled sheet or a loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. Composition and like, and those like, is the OG. You can literally rip out a page and it won't be that messy. I promise. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Alright, we get to choose. Who should I show my poem to first? I'm going with Sayori. I'm definitely most comfortable of sharing with Sayori first. She's my good friend after all. Alright, I'm gonna try and press different girls. Dot dot dot. Oh my goodness! This is so good, Roxy. Yeah, it's about death, depression, and yes. Eh? I love it. I had no idea you were such a good writer. Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, it's just like random words like grief, depression, tragedy, joy, fun, prayer. Well, maybe that's why. Maybe because I don't, I have no idea what I like either. Ha ha ha. Jeez, I'm sure Yuri's option opinion has to be something a little more constructive with, than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I, th I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a Roxy poem. <laughs> yes, it's about Burger King, right, Roxy? You love Burger King so much, and it makes this feel extra special. Like, I feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the- yeah, feelings of despair. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> I'm really happy that you just wrote one. It reminds me of how you are really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Okay, here. Yeah, 49 minutes. Okay. Oh, uh, whoops. Right. Er, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Roxy. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people. That's something only really good people that do. Yeah, Roxy, you're a good person. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah? And I guess I'm gonna 
And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That'll be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! <laughs> now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. Oh, we can get to read other people's poems? <laughs> we'll see about that. I have no idea why is this horror, but I'm pretty sure there's gonna be some graphic imagery in Cyrus's poem. Let's see. Oh, okay, no. Oh, I like this music! Aww. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning. I like the flute. The way you glow through my blinds in this morning. It makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me get out of bed. Making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above. The sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> Aww. Oh my gosh. Let's just take some time to enjoy this music. This is awesome music. This music deeply relates to me. <laughs> Like last time, I learned how to play the flute last time. I, I used to play a cabinet. Alright, enough. Sayori, this is just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? No. Just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Ah, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how I should put it. It just sounds like you. Really? Yeah. Especially like that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even you were, even though you were late to school? It's about to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, there's no point in arguing. Anyways, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Ah, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm going to write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I should look forward to it. Hey, Roxy? You're, you're a good... Natsuki! Huh? Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. Darn, that's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. It just didn't evoke any emotion. So basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes? Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. Sigh. Well, I guess... Anyway, I guess I should. Sh I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. Okay, that's... Yeah! I told, I told you you weren't going to like it. I like it, Roxy. You're a really good boyfriend, even though you're a girl. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? I need a check. I really need a check most of the time. I need a check. I'm sorry, y'all. Well, because... Because every... <laughs> everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all about... Has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people won't even take my writing seriously. But... Isn't the point? Isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your mess message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But. The other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up 
back for a rhyme at the end, but then it falls flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in, la in the last line. So you did. I guess I went more into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor with her that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Right? Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Monica. Hi, Roxy. Having a good time so far? Oh, uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever had any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm I'm much better off than just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I'll have to. Ahaha. Don't worry, Roxy. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sort of things in common. Ah, well. We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But maybe because there are also, also some similarities you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it on different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So, I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your phone, po phone, poem. Mm-hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? Haha, <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any way, Sayuri's writing has a kind of gentle feel to it. I can tell you likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Sadness? Who knew that someone would happy would enjoy sad things too? They are right, like, like, like cry and despair. Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own, and you shouldn't be afraid to experience me a little bit either. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love for you to see you try new things. That's the best any way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kinds of styles. But I always help you to find what suits you the most. Okay, I need to move. Hold on, sorry y'all. I need to move. Goodbye, tortilla chips. I'm gonna go to my room now. Urgh! Come on, Roxy. Is it? Okay, it's good. Right. Yeah, it's working. All right, Nana, hi. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone wants you to write. Hold on. Bring Kawaii cat. Alright. I'm gonna call her Kawaii cat. Hi y'all. Alright. Um, um I feel like the lamp okay. Okay. Write the way everyone wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Is it recording? Okay, yeah, I have to check frequently. Anyways, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who say, uh, claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in wall. It could have been me. See the direction the sparkle protrudes. A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I, I reel blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. 
My retinas already scorched up in a permanent copy of a meaningless image. It's just a little too, it's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole in, of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out, and he on the other side was looking in. Oh, Monica, that was a really good one. So, what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform if you if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for pre-feedback. Aha, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of stuff has gotten pretty popular nowadays. I have to go over really fast. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration between behind this one? Ah, uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say I had some epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An, an epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. But maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to... Get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen on the same spot for too long, you'll just get a dark, big, dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Dot, dot, dot. Mmm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes, more than enough time for her to finish reading. Uh, oh, sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Um, it's fine, don't forget yourself. Don't forget, don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Alright, one hour. I've been stream. I've been recording for one whole hour. Hold on, okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Er, uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Ah, so it is that bad. No! Did I just raise my voice? I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice it's been several minutes and we haven't really gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine, really, I didn't notice. What were you saying? Right, um, it's just that there are specific writing habits that are ty usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I've kind of learned to pick up on them. I think that's the noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit into the two together. The end result is just both the style and expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you could be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding themselves and building themselves, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it comes with practice and learning by example, trying new things. Roxy, this is for you. I also hope that everyone in the, else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be able to be talking to people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing me or... Right, do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do! I love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her, which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature, literature, literature club? Ghosts under the lights. The tendrils on my hair illuminate from the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. 
the last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time, the last to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing, out of the present but living in the past. The light flickens. I flick her back. Okay. Dot, dot, dot. I'm sorry, I just have some terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it just took you a long time to read. Ah, uh, bro, I took three seconds. Well, I don't read script very often. I usually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. I also like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. Roxy, you know all this good vocabulary? You never went to school. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you liked it. To be honest, since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little bit more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Siri? Hoo-hoo! Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Roxy. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you only did glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is being symbol symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it just makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that I won't be long before you pick up on these things too yeah maybe you're right i guess i'll have to keep trying i'm counting on you phew i guess that's everyone sorry if i'm being a little cringe right now i'm just so excited i glanced around the room that was a little bit more stressful than i anticipated yeah it was stressful Okay, that's enough cringe. As if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all! I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across in the room, Sayuri and Monica are happily cheating. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eye eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively re returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you just completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have nothing to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it didn't really come out that nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayuri liked it, and Roxy did too. So basically like that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. Mm. And Roxy liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh, it's about to get real. Oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Oh my gosh, the music cut. Okay, there it is. Eh? That's not what I... Oh, you're, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Roxy appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Dang, they're fighting over you, Roxy. Huh? And how do you even know that he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you so, are you that full of yourself? 
I know. If I was fooling myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Ugh. Um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one who's... Beep, magically grow a size bigger as soon as Roxy started showing up. Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls toward, turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Roxy! She's, she's trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this would have never happened in the first place. What's in the point of making your poems all convoluted with no, for no reason? The meaning should jump out of the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. This is over a poem, guys. This is over a poem. Help me to that. Help me to explain that to her, Roxy. Wait! There's a reason why we have so many deep, expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning that most effectively. Avoiding them is not unnecessary limiting yourself. It's also a waste. You understand that, right, Roxy? Um, well... Dot, dot, dot. How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. Oh, no. Sorry. Natsuki... Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead, I turn to Yuri. Yuri! Dot, dot, dot. But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything about her. Sayori! Hey? Yeah. Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How could the two of you fighting, even though you're knowing you're making your friend feel like this? Hey, look. Oh, no. Toy Bonnie. Roxy, Roxy is a friend, okay? She likes fighting. She also likes hanging out with her friends at Starbucks, even though they're little, they're little gossipers. Roxy. Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our own conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri that she's a stuck-up jerk that she's being. She would never. It's your immature day that make you her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you trying to listen to yourself? This is exactly why. Exactly why nobody likes... Stop. Natsuki, Yuri. You guys are my friends. I, I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people. Yeah, they are. And I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems... They're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poem are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures on your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Because, well... Also, Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And you... Stop it with the thing. Stop saying that. And Yuri is... Are the same way as they always were. Big and beautiful. <laughs> dot dot dot. <laughs> dot dot dot. Sayori. Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So, this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader, but I can and I can order and organize things. But I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing of me. Haha. <laughs> nah. It's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that means Sayuri's amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She may be an airhead, <laughs> but sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate her to. I would hate to see her get herself hurt. That makes the two of us. You can count of me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to knot. Such a genuine person really says, really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, everyone, it's just about time for us to leave. How did y'all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I said it was worth it. It was all right. Well, mostly. Roxy, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. 
Awesome! In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you'll learn something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. Dot dot dot. I think to myself, I did learn a little bit more about the kinds of poems that everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Roxy, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sorry beams at me. It's truly been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say if I'm enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier? Eh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no! That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted to see your opinion, that's all. I see why they make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Roxy, it's nice that I get, to, I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. Sigh. It looks like Sari hasn't caught onto the kind of situation I'm in. Sari is like the most funnest of the friends. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to wait and see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay! Yeah. Let's do this. Poem time! Alright, we're gonna go with Yuri. Universe. Okay, we're gonna go with Yuri. Agonizing. Uh, we already chose Rain Cloud. We already got, um, Sayori with that. Wait, no, we didn't choose Rain Cloud. Did we? Essence. Disoriented. Uh, candy. Ah! Oh! Uh, smile. Oh, that's Sayori. Misfortune. Uh, massacre. Okay, okay. Sayori has depression. Hurt? No, 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 unending. Inferno. Anxiety. Oh, whoops. Toy Bonnie just fell. Oh, Toy Bonnie. Is this still recording? Yes, this is still recording. Alone. Yeah. Oh! Right, uh. Uh. Vitality. Horror. Tears? Oh, I feel bad for Sayori now. I, I feel bad. Landscape. Unrestrained. Tenacious. We did it! We did it, y'all. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting. I've gotten a little bit more uncomfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the unusual scene greets me. Hi, Roxy. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just not, still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty thing, simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's only the simple things with you anyway. I think I should skip this. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? That's not, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Wh why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Ah. Uh... Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents fill on, on the desk. Only two small coins fall off. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair! How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you could have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk. 
or you plan to con conventionally forget that you spent all your money so that I will lend you some. But there's one more thing. Yeah, don't, don't. You're always hungry. <laughs> and so that leaves only one option. Wah! I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. You feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Uh -huh. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Ah. Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri. Tell Roxy to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only know... You should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a little mischie mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Dot, dot, dot. Ah. Did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed on my book. Ooh. Aha. I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. Oh, that's nice. Okay, this is a recording, yes. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you can think that. You were right, though. I did something bad now, and I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That. Still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she can eat. She even told me. But you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes, so I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, don't give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Seriously? Why Why do these games keep messing me up? And how is this a horror game? What? Yeah! Out of nowhere, something smacked Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was... Eh? A cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because it's it's because they paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing a reaction, though. Haha. <laughs> Natsuki, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Natsuki, Sayori, <laughs> Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sorry, rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mmm. Sorry, accidentally clasped her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're really going there over loud for just one cookie. All right, I need to skip this. Oh, whoa, whoa. Okay. She ate Natsuki's cookie. All right. All right. Where's Monica anyway? Good question, have you? Okay. She probably had just had something to do today. She probably popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... Uh -huh, I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Eh, that's true. Excuse me. Okay, suddenly the door is Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't working, worried or anything. Eh? Monica shows the club over her boyfriend after all. <laughs> You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Oh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, uh, well, my last... My last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of lost track of time. Anyway, uh-huh. That makes no sense, though. You wouldn't have heard about it right now. Please. Piano. Oh, she was practicing piano. Okay, I don't really discuss her music. I'm sorry, y'all, but you guys can just pause. I really... Thanks. Best of luck. Tsukiza. Right. Oh, okay. It's with Yuri. Alright. They're reading a book. Anyways. That is all I have for today. Um, I'm gonna save. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm unsure of why this is a horror game or how this became a horror game, but I don't want to know. 
So anyways, thank you guys for listening to this, watching this video of mine from my YouTube channel. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as well, Merry Christmas. Um, it is 1224, 24th of December. Um, and if, it, if you're watching this on Christmas, Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas Eve, everyone. I hope you guys have a wonderful year and a happy new year as well. Thank you guys for listening. Um, I'm going to continue tomorrow or ne uh, after tomorrow because tomorrow I have a Five Nights at Freddy's 2's Christmas special to keep up on. And yeah. Bye. <laughs> right. Say bye, Toy Bonnie. Bye, Toy Bonnie. I'm going to be also putting Toy Bonnie in the FNAF 2 video and Roxy. Roxy and her Starbucks friends. So, um, anyways. Bye-bye! <laughs> Bye.